Hi, Soana. How are you? Oh, fine. Thank you. And you? Okay. Fine. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank you for joining us today in this 8th of March. We are celebrating the International um, Humans Day by interviewing some relevant human in SSE. So thank you for joining us. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, you are, you are. Don't be shy, you are. Um, and um, so we are here with Soana from Italia. And I would ask you to introduce yourself first. Yes. I'm Soana Tortora, uh, I'm from Italia, and I'm working as a solidarious in some activity of training and uh, uh, in Italy and uh, abroad. This is my relevant uh, <laughs> activity in this, <laughs> in this moment. Great, great. So trying to, to link with that uh, relevant and important activity, we would like to hear you on how do you see the role of education towards a transformative feminism? Unfortunately, in, Italy, in Italian school, at all levels, stereotypes of patriarchal culture are still very much present. Often, and uh, I'm saying this uh, with great sadness, it's precisely female teacher, especially the older ones, who project these more traditional models onto their trainees. And your teacher, both male and female, are starting to replace the older ones. So there is some hope. And the problem, uh, however, lies in the fact that everywhere, and therefore also in all places of education, the difference between women and men, the point of view, the way of feeling and treating relationship, the same ways of constructing thought and facing reality that women have acquired over the centuries, all these elements are not considered as culture. They are not considered as factor of social, political, and economic transformation. And this uh, happened as if the content of the knowledge that's taught and written in books and are now available on the web was uh, neutral and did not pass through the bodies of those we offer it and change it with future generations, putting themselves personally at risk. And we know that this is no so. Well, I believe that this capacity for the change, for practicing reciprocity, giving and receiving, which is typical of women, is a great driving force for transformation in a training which is also, as we know, action. And we can practice it day to day, not only in the formal place of training. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, so this, yes. this kind of, of um, general shall change is also important for education and hopefully we will change some minds towards education. Um, and based on this relevant experience and your life story, could you tell us a professional or personal story where being a woman was decisive to a transformative experience? <laughs> My age allowed me to experience also personally, personally uh, the season of feminism. And it, is a, it has been a tiring but also exciting process. Because when you see overcoming stereotypes, you first have to overcome them within yourself. And this means rethinking yourself deep down and at the same time, time you suffer and free yourself. A bit like church bird, <laughs> but then life changes and transforms you. And so you try to live this adventure in your daily life, in your personal life, as well as your professional life in wider, wider fields. 
and you also try to involve the more woman next to you to look at them with different eyes and to look with these eyes at the two daughter that in the meantime you have found next to you at first children and then women through this perfect my professional and associative commitment has given me great opportunities I have been through different times and places from the pain of the stories of the Bosnian women victim of ethnic rape in the former Yugoslavia to the desire for the redemption of those who in the Brazilian favelas or the in Argentine suburb of the 20 and 2 economic crisis have searched for exemption in the collaboration and the sisterhood of the solidarity economy. So I went through the season of the World Social Forums and then also the slowness of a process of global transformation that uh, with difficulty a stride and is trying not to be consumed by the all made patriarchal power of rampant neoliberalism. And now, in this new life <laughs> invented with Solidarius, after retirement in the construction of experiences, especially training in the field of social solidarity economy, I am in company of more and more women, as you, more <laughs> and more. And I see this uh, as a promising sign of transformation. Yeah, for sure. I'm always moved when I listen to that, that, uh, those thoughts. And I also would like to underline what you said, that transformation starts with ourselves, with our analysis oh, yes. and how we relate with other women. And oh, we yes. have compassion yes. and understanding um, yes. towards our, uh, the other women and the other human beings. Um, so to end, with an even more inspirational note. So could you give us uh, a word of incentive to young women? One word, <laughs> not only. I can <laughs> think of two words okay. <laughs> that go together. And these two words are hope and courage. You, young women, are the hope, but not alone. Then the courage is to go out from us, from you, to create strong links, first of all, with other women, to create sisterhood ties, especially with many women, young or not, who have not had or don't have the same courage I find it difficult in this time of uncertainty to look the, to look to their future with hope. And this uh, this time uh, uh, hopeless, hopeless. And mm -hmm. uh, this is for us, it's a not good time. No, not at all. But at least we have you with your <laughs> inspirations. Oh, yes. So that's a, that's a great way to end this with hope and courage. Thank you so much, Solana. Oh, to you very much. Bye. <laughs>